Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. We are back again for the podcast and video series with Narrative Malaysia, where in this program, we talk to experienced and active scholars within the field of the social sciences and the field of policy making and also uh, activism, more specifically. Today, we have with us here, and we are very grateful and happy to have with us here, Prof. Professor Francis Law who has been one of the most active uh, scholars and also uh, writers, research, as well as the advocacy of uh, merging and trying to translate uh, social science research into activism and also policy making. So there's a brief introduction of Prof. 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 Francis. He has held many positions in, 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 many, in many countries, among others, Australia, in Monash and Melbourne University, in Japan, and also in Penang, particularly in University of Science Malaysia, where I believe he has spent the bulk of his teaching and research here. He recently is working on, I believe, a, a very important project on the uh, research on democracy and also federalism and decentralization and themes in regards to the governance and politics in the context of uh, Myanmar. So thank you very much, Prof, for being with us today, for, jo for, for joining us. Thank you very much for the introduction. Very kind. Thank you, Prof. So may, maybe we could begin with just, a, 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 let's just talk about What's happening in Malaysia now? Sure. Everyone is wondering, is Malaysia imploding or, or is Malaysia going to sink under some weight of critical social issues, political issues that we confront now? Maybe, Prof, how, how do you see or make sense of what's yeah. happening today? I, I think something definitely is happening. And for me, it is uh, we are at a juncture again. Mm -hmm. At this juncture, at this, um, the whole political system seems to be in transition. Mm -hmm. And you see this in terms of how BN, AMNO, which held power for 30, 40 years, yeah. it's actually non-existent. <laughs> yeah. You know, and even AMNO itself, you mm -hmm. know, cannot rule by itself mm -hmm. like it used to be able to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but they brought in a lot of BN, you know, mm -hmm. coalition Clinches, and all yeah. that. It cannot do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So it seems like the future requires that we go into coalition politics okay. forever and ever. Yeah. A lot of the parties that are emerging are very new things. Mm -hmm. And they're very much attached to particular individuals. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is a very important transition mm -hmm. from the Perikatan Alliance and then to Barisan, Barisan National yeah. and then this one. Mm -hmm. you know, and I fear that it will also mean that actually uh, governments will be very, very short-lived. Uh, right, you know, and mm -hmm. we might be actually going to the polls mm -hmm. all of the time, S sooner, provided uh, <laughs> you know they continue to allow us to vote. Yeah, la. they might yeah. you know declare no need to vote anymore and change to a different vote. system. Altogether. Yeah, <laughs> so they, that could actually happen. Yeah, and I think for me, one of the significant changes that's happening is we have lost a lot of institutions over time. Mm -hmm. But what one of the strong institutions that we had left was the political party. Okay. Our judiciary was gone. Our mm -hmm. legislature, you know, for a long time, it mm -hmm. was, you know, you know, rubber stamp, right. you know. Yeah. And the universities have been really, you know, declining. Mm -hmm. But political parties uh, were very vigorous. Yeah. And they had invigorated themselves by going into politics, into mm -hmm. media, into universities, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. But they themselves now mm -hmm. are under assault. Under stress. <laughs> yes. So you ask yourself, you know, I mean, yeah. given these circumstances... What's holding Malaysia together? Mm -hmm. Seriously, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, is it maybe you know a constitution of mm -hmm. 1957, mm -hmm. and because we have been so imbued with legalism as yeah. a people, yeah. So that yeah. that's perhaps what's holding us because we don't mm -hmm. have any respect and mm -hmm. you know for the mil uh, for the police. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't have that great respect for judiciary. The institutions that you've yes. mentioned earlier. So yeah. it's all really beginning to wither away. Yeah. And I, I'm very scared because uh, I think the economy is also under assault. Mm -hmm. um, partly 
as a result of our kleptocracy reputation, mm-hmm. but also because the global situation is under a flux. Yeah. So you might not actually have a lot of investors coming, coming in so much and all mm-hmm. that. And in a sense, this was uh, Najib's dilemma. He had to do business with China. Yeah. yeah. Because nobody else was coming. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. you know, he of course then uh, allowed the Chinese to, you know, to make yeah. certain agreements mm-hmm. with. Yeah. <laughs> so in a sense, so this is the economy. Yeah. And this COVID thing, you know, we're really not, we're handling it much better, mm-hmm. but, you know, there could be another round of spike. Yeah. So all this coincidence of mm-hmm. the pandemic, mm-hmm. the economy, I mean, the politics, the US, society, and then the, yeah, at different levels, yeah. yeah. So going on that, if I can, if if I may. So going on that 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 trajectory, how do you see? So moving on to a more academic and and more uh, theoretical questions, how do you see social sciences as a field itself in in Malaysia trying or being able to at least, if not, un if not answer or resolve, help us to understand and make sense of these things? How do you see it? I think that unfortunately for me, uh, you don't get social scientists. Zeroing, zeroing in on these big issues. Mm-hmm. If you do a survey of a lot of our academic journals in recent times mm-hmm. and all that, you see that actually it's full of multi-authored articles. Papers, yeah. <laughs> With and five, they, six, seven. they're doing quantitative analysis, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. by and large. Yeah. You know, actually, whereas actually the situation requires deep analysis, mm. you know, mm. and uh, you need to have a few volumes that actually investigate mm-hmm. these kinds of big changes over time. Yeah. Perhaps it needs to be done by a team. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, it just needs to be done. Then, but yeah. it's not being done. Yeah. And you cannot do this via quantitative analysis. Mm-hmm. You know, and so for me that's one of the sad yeah. aspects. Yeah. And uh, related to that, you need people to be looking at this whole mess of kleptocracy. I mean what mm-hmm. What is the drive, you know, what allows for kleptocracy to actually emerge and thrive in a place like Malaysia? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, within this is not a natural thing because we didn't have this problem in the past. Yeah. So, you know, what are the circumstances mm-hmm. which, which allows mm-hmm. for this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How would you see what are the differences? You mentioned that we didn't have this kleptocracy. Mm-hmm. So, in, in terms of this uh could we say institutional deficiency or how is it different from the past when it comes to, to kleptocracy? What is the significance of, of kleptocracy? Yeah. Could, could you share with us or maybe? I think if you go back in time, mm-hmm. you know, the British times, uh, actually the British are very old-fashioned type of administrative people mm-hmm. and they left us actually very strong sets of institutions mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they took a lot of trouble to transit out mm-hmm. and bring in Mm-hmm. Malayanization of mm-hmm. the bureaucracy, the police, the and, civil service, you know, and, and everything the, else. The state, yeah. And even legislative mm-hmm. you know, participation was slowly, mm-hmm. local government level, yeah. parliamentary level, state level, and all that. Mm-hmm. So they did this. I think, uh, you know, Tungku's time, you know, this was, we were, we were just, you know, after independence mm-hmm. and all that. This period, he, he actually respected the need for these kinds of institutions. Mm-hmm. You know, and he was a British trained, you know, legal person, you know. Yeah. So he, you know, that was with us for at least 10 years mm-hmm. until 69. Mm-hmm. Thereafter, for me, the 70s was a, a period of, again, transition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chaotic. Yeah. Absolutely chaotic, starting with the <laughs> 1969 elections. Yeah. The Chinese then decide, are we in or out with government mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. Then finally, they do, oh, let's do the Barisan Nasional. <laughs> <laughs> and the students weren't sure what they wanted to do. There were student uprisings. Mm-hmm. And the Dawa movement began to emerge. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this whole decade was mm-hmm. a period of mm-hmm. turbulence. Yeah. Matia enters the scene. <laughs> he changes everything. Mm-hmm. You know, in the beginning, he actually asserts his authority. Very mm-hmm. authoritarian. Mm-hmm. And then ends up climaxes in 1987. Mm-hmm. Lalang. Lalang. Yeah. But, you know, his style was, mm-hmm. you know, by fiat lah. Yeah. And he, in the process, actually, people who have studied Dr. Mahathir's period, mm-hmm. I don't see enough analysis 
talking about how he destroyed the institutions. Mm-hmm. The he undermining infected. of the public institutions yes. and the, yeah, he or the convergence of authority. That's maybe. right. Yeah. And he actually then centralizes power. Mm-hmm. And he was very charismatic. He was yeah. very capable. Mm-hmm. He kept people in check. And that's what held the country together. Mm-hmm. And he was very lucky in the sense that his regime coincided with, you know, the East Asian, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, you know, um, what do you call it? The, the economy the well as well. So was Malaysia rising at was the time. part of this, you know, mm-hmm. glorious period yeah. in East Asia. Mm-hmm. You know, and after the Kyoto, the Plaza, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Accords, mm-hmm. 1994. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, <laughs> all these FI, FDI started flowing Learning into it, yeah. the country from Taiwan, mm-hmm. Japan, you mm-hmm. know, Korea mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. It gave us a big fillip, economic speaking, economic yeah. wise. So this and that period when the economy was really just growing and growing until double digit per mm-hmm. annum, mm-hmm. Mathia relax. He doesn't mm-hmm. he, he actually withdraws some of his authoritarianism mm-hmm. and he privatizes everything, mm-hmm. you know, the economy then got bubbles up a bit. Yeah. And uh, instead of one television station, two television, <laughs> he allows you to have twenty television stations. So it's liberal in that sense. Yeah. There was a choice. Yeah. Because of economic considerations and yes. primarily also. And yeah. there was a lot of troubles about universities and all and he said, okay, now mind you can start private universities. <laughs> See, actually, and then the, the whole in a sense, that period was so tense mm-hmm. ten years before. Yeah. Because people were competing to get into university, he comes along and says, mm-hmm. Okay, start your university. Mm-hmm. And MCA you want one license, I give one. M I C also wants mm-hmm. one. Okay, can. Yeah. So he gives it, and, he, and so the Barisan National mm-hmm. non Malay parties, they all buy in. Mm-hmm. And this period for me, I have described it as a period of developmentalism. Yeah. We bought into developmentalism. Mm-hmm. And he delivered. Yeah. He was lucky because he rode on this global you know, and regional, yeah, yeah, regional wave you know, yeah. economic yeah. development. Wave. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Prof, so maybe we could zoom in about your own involvement, more specifically, and, and your, your works and, and role and writings in the field and the his, and development of social sciences in yeah. Malaysia itself. So one of the things that stand out and becomes very prominent is your role in, in instituting and being involved with Aliran. How, how do you, reflecting back and then looking at, as, mm-hmm. you, as you mentioned, those and in fact until now you know there's a continuum and discontinue but also continue how how do you when you reflect back how do you see your role in 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 yeah. in, you know, in this developed trajectory of building aliran maybe i'd like to just clarify i mean i played an important role i think in aliran but yeah. i was never the figure yeah. in charge yeah and that honor goes to ramakrishna mm-hmm. he held mm-hmm. the fort for 18 years mm-hmm. as president. Mm-hmm. I was yeah, his I... secretary, you know, for mm-hmm. all this period of time. And I took the excuse that I'm in the university, I shouldn't be <laughs> leading, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rama was very annoyed with me about this, but nonetheless, you know, mm-hmm. he continued on, he plowed on. Mm-hmm. So, and then it was only the last five, six years that I took over as mm-hmm. president. Yeah. And so he held the fort. So, yes, but I think the, the role that I played was in a sense, I thought I was a middleman mm-hmm. between this group called Aliran and actually the academicians, scholar activists in mm-hmm. USN. Mm-hmm. So who wrote mm-hmm. for Aliran in mm-hmm. that period of time? Mm-hmm. Johan Sarawan Mutu, Masna Muhammad, <laughs> Kubute, yeah. Kuke Jin. Who are from the school. They're all from, from the that school. place. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Tan Liu Yi, you know, and mm-hmm. I would chase these friends of mine. <laughs> And they yeah. bought into the argument that we... I didn't need to persuade them. They mm-hmm. themselves were mm-hmm. very... You know, they Active. understood politics. Yeah. And this was... You know, we talk about... We use the term local mm-hmm. knowledge. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, for me, this is the special thing about the scholar activist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not that you know the language better or you are actually more informed about, you know, religion, you know, mm-hmm. than the foreign scholar, you see? Mm-hmm. Because this is our... You know, we claim this <laughs> advantage over foreign scholars mm-hmm. because we have local knowledge. Mm-hmm. And I think actually I pin it down to actually a greater sensitivity to the politics mm-hmm. of the day. 
Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we address this the way that foreign scholars mm-hmm. sometimes don't, they are not sensitized to, yeah. sometimes they purposely avoid mm-hmm. because yeah. it jeopardizes their position. Mm-hmm. But we jump in. Mm-hmm. That for me is the local advantage that we have. Mm-hmm. And I think it makes us cutting edge. Yeah. Because we then address the critical issues of the day, mm-hmm. we can identify what are the critical issues, mm-hmm. and then we relate it to the other narrative, the other discourse, mm-hmm. you know, which they want to do in America or England or Japan, mm-hmm. which is you know the social science discourse. Mm-hmm. Ours is actually a, it's a more political narrative, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. But uh, and we tune into it, mm-hmm. and we you know we take these two mm-hmm. we glue it together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think this this makes me special. Yeah. And makes my friends mm-hmm. special. It makes people like, you know, mm-hmm. our friend, you know, mm-hmm. everybody ask me it will be special mm-hmm. because we do this, you see. Mm-hmm. And that has somehow been institutionalized, if I may say, within, for instance, if going back to Aleran, it has been, or at least as a platform for, for this to come up and, and, and to reflect the, that. If you're level. talking, you know, in, uh, NGOs, you don't talk institutionalized. Like you yeah, talk about, we network it. Network. You know? <laughs> okay. So we, there is a jalin kan lah, mm-hmm. jalin kan hubungan itu. Mm-hmm. You know, and then that's that's actually mm-hmm. what we succeeded in doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, these were people whom I could make sure mm-hmm. every year they would give us one or two these articles. Mm-hmm. And I want to emphasize that these are we were a bunch of scholar activists. You know? mm-hmm. We were very scholarly. Mm-hmm. We did the research. Mm-hmm. And then, but, you know, we understood that this is not writing for an academic journal. Mm-hmm. And pers- speaking for myself, I, I see a symbiotic relationship between my popular writing mm-hmm. for the Aliran Monthly, for the website, mm-hmm. and actually the academic work I do. Mm-hmm. The academic work, I will put footnotes in, you know, yeah, and the usual these kinds of things. <laughs> this one, I don't. I must learn how not mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and you must be able to make your arguments very succinct. Mm-hmm. And you know, my reputation at Aliran mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. Francis, your articles are too long. <laughs> you know, so but uh, I have a problem then, yeah. but I'm still learning, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you must learn to write yeah. three pages, something like that. You know, yeah, I'm yes. very critical from this perspective. I'm very critical of people who then have no patience to read beyond one page, one page. <laughs> you know, which seems read. to be the pattern or the trend. Yeah, I, and unfortunately, I think this is also one of the trends that's mm-hmm. emerging. You see, and people think that they are automatically uh, they understand the situation mm-hmm. because they have actually looked at the Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, actually they don't yeah. understand mm-hmm. fully. Yeah, and yeah. I make no excuses for mm-hmm. us doing scholarly analysis mm-hmm. and writing mm-hmm. lengthy pieces. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't think we should run away from mm-hmm. you know that. Act, being a scholar activist doesn't mean that you mm-hmm. give that up with that rigor. Yeah. You still you must. Yeah. So so on, on that. So since Prof Francis, you mentioned on on this uh, academic component. So I- in your own work, you have also researched and written extensively on political science themes, political analysis. So yeah. how, and you mentioned this now, developmentalism. So over the years, what have you been, what has occupied your attention and focus within the discipline, if I may say, of political science itself? And perhaps maybe enlarging it to its relation within the larger social sciences field. Yeah. I think one of the I've, I've done this quite consciously, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, which is I've tried to look at politics in Malaysia from the side. Mm-hmm. And my first work was actually, you know, my PhD thesis was focused on the Kinta tin mines. Yeah. I mean, it's a very different view from going to Putrajaya or Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. So it's actually looking from the Chinese new villages. Mm-hmm. These were squatters, mm-hmm. you know. These were part-time miners. Every time the economy collapses, they get thrown out from the tin mines, they become squatter farmers. Mm-hmm. But because, you know, the state doesn't allow them to a license, they remain, mm-hmm. you know, temporarily doing this like mm-hmm. that. So this, I've, I've always done this kind of research. Mm-hmm. So when I finished and climbed out of the mines, you know, <laughs> uh, I went to Sabah. Yeah. So I did work on the Kadazan Dusun, you know, and mm-hmm. at, at that time when I went in, it was in turbulence. Of course, I get attracted by turbulence as well, you see. <laughs> So I went there, you know, and I was very 
interested to find out, you know, the re-emergence of Kadazan Dusun nationalism. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, what's the character because they mm-hmm. already had one round of nationalism mm-hmm. under Fuad Stevens. Yeah. So this yeah. one was a re-emergence of an ethno-regionalism and so mm-hmm. so forth. Mm-hmm. But they were very, very clear. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't want to be colonized by, you know, the, 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 yeah. And they use terms like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, we are one of three, we are not one of 13. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, so this is their terminology, you know, mm-hmm. I picked this up when I was there. Yeah. You know, and uh, mm-hmm. I discovered that all the big, sh- you know, the leaders of parties, you know, they're not interested to go and become menteri Persekutuan. <laughs> they just want they they focus <laughs> on actually mm-hmm. local politics, yeah. state politics, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know the uh, turnout rates. Mm-hmm. Always, I've done research on this. Turnout rates for state elections always higher, higher than, than for the, general, general elections. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah. so I did that. Mm-hmm. Coming back here, I started then looking at uh, Indians. Mm-hmm. So I did a very important essay mm-hmm. as a fresh drift for my mentor, la, mm, Benedict yeah. Anderson, on mm-hmm. actually on the the plight of the Indians. Mm-hmm. Again, by coincidence, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, the, in Penang, there was this uh, conflict that took place in the Kampung. Kampung uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just outside Datuk Kramat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I happened to have just finished uh, some interviews with that people. So I very mm-hmm. easy for me to go back to the village to talk about this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so, because the, I was with, with Suri at that time, mm-hmm. and Suri was doing this uh, study on the plight of the Penang Indians. Indians so right. we took off from that. Mm-hmm. And then I connected to what mm-hmm. Kuma was doing in Sungai Siput, mm-hmm. and just you know, sort of like sewed uh, articles together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and, mm-hmm. uh, so I, that's, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm finishing a piece I have shied away from writing about Islam, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to put my different articles together yeah. in yeah. a collection, mm-hmm. and I have to write about Islam. Mm-hmm. So I've been writing, you know, reading, and I want to write this final piece. Mm-hmm. And apart from that, I have a article I've, you know, which I delivered in Kyoto, which has not been published, mm-hmm. which is on labor, mm-hmm. and the title is actually, you know. What has happened to labor in Malaysia? Yeah, yeah. Nobody is studying labor. Yeah, it's no longer a term yeah. <laughs> that so people talk a, about. Yeah. yeah. So on that, in in going forward, what what do you see as a as an observer also and as a as a scholar? Do you see any recurring themes that that have been unresolved and still emerge? Or and are there any? In addition to that, are there any new critical issues that have rose to the field of research, do you think? In, I think one of the weaknesses in our social science, mm-hmm. you know, quite apart from the fact that, you know, I was telling my friend Asmil, you mm-hmm. know, that actually there seems to be like a gap. Mm-hmm. There were people like the Said Hussein, Noraini, Lokawa, Sicilia and all that. <laughs> and then there's this younger generation mm-hmm. a middle generation mm-hmm. has disappeared yeah and in a sense this is you know you you were not trained by that group you see mm-hmm. so it's a so you you wonder what happened to them and i think there was a period when both malays and non malays were just leaving academia okay for all kinds of reasons mm-hmm. you know it was a faster track Mm-hmm. you know, to get out of academia in terms of, you know, pay packages, you mm-hmm. know, to rise up and all that. And some mm-hmm. of them ended up doing very good work outside of academia. academia. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of non-Malays and all stopped coming to, mm-hmm. you know, they were top students and they knew mm-hmm. there were problems in the university. I mean, you couldn't get promotion, you mm-hmm. didn't get, you know, mm-hmm. so they left. They mm-hmm. didn't. So, uh, what we need to do is actually to make sure that, you know, this continuity mm-hmm. is you know, recreated mm-hmm. you know, for the future. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think um, it's, a, it's a tough call mm-hmm. and uh, it doesn't really need to be done via the university. Okay. It can be done outside of the university, mm-hmm. in fact. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like in Penang, when you have an academic discussion and all that, you don't 
you hardly go to USM to, to do to this. Discuss. You go to Penang Institute nowadays. Mm-hmm. Or you go to NGOs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, KL, you're talking about Islam and all that. For a long time, you go mm-hmm. to Sisters yeah. or Farouk. And, yeah. you know, Rather than group. the university. Yeah. <laughs> Islamic <laughs> Renaissance. And, yeah. You know, you do it that way. Mm-hmm. Or for me, mm-hmm. for a long, long time, mm-hmm. Uh, there was Aliran, yeah, and there was actually mm-hmm. BSSM, the Satuan mm-hmm. Science Social Social Malaysia. Yeah. And I think the younger generation mm-hmm. we can actually has to reinvestigate BSSM. You mm-hmm. have to rebuild that. Yeah, it is so important, mm-hmm. you know, an organization. Mm-hmm. It linked us all together. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're doing work in the universities or in NGOs or, or you were individuals. Mm-hmm. PSSM is sort of like the younger people's project. Mm-hmm. You know, it used to be in the past, Syed Hussein was our leader. Yeah. And then after yeah. that, I think was Jomo. Jomo. No, no, no. Sec- after that was uh, uh, Rustam. Rustam. First. Yeah, Rustam yeah. held the fort for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. Iqmal, one yeah. Iqmal's side. Yeah. And then Ishak Shari. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. you know, Raman Imbo. Mm, yeah, Pak Raman. <laughs> so you have to actually begin to recreate mm-hmm. that sort of academic mm-hmm. network mm-hmm. that was uh, PSSM. Yeah. And we used to publish a journal mm-hmm. called Ilmu Masyarakat. We, we did it in, in both English and Malay. Mm-hmm. So you have to go back to that. Yeah. You know? And we held the most exciting annual talks mm-hmm. and I think biannual conferences. conferences yeah, under P- PSSM, yes. yeah, the MSC. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you need a center, you see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, don't the, the government has destroyed the center, so mm-hmm. the individuals must mm-hmm. rebuild that. Yeah. yeah. So what? So on, on that, how? What do you think the implications will be, Prof? If the very centers that are supposed to be so called at the forefront of research and cutting edge uh, analysis are not functioning or maybe dysfunctioning, and then it has been taken over by networks as you call them or groups outside what do you think are the implications for 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 this that's yeah i mean that's very unfortunate you know mm-hmm. but uh, um but uh, it's not surprising i spent 33 years in a place like usm mm. <laughs> and uh, towards the end i mm-hmm. didn't expect very much you know uh, USM to take the lead mm. you know it's the, our motto is kami memimpin you see yeah. <laughs> but by that time tak memimpin apa-apa lagi lah you know but uh, what was important for me was mm. I had a base mm-hmm. you know and uh, there were friends of mine inside mm-hmm. you know and we were all doing things together mm-hmm. I think there are still opportunities uh, within the institutions like universities mm-hmm. you tap into they have money mm-hmm. outside you don't have money mm-hmm. you know so we we used to do research together. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Halim Sai, Iqmal, you know, myself, Richard Mason. We, we went research together. Mm-hmm. And those were the loveliest research experiences. Mm-hmm. Like. And then we came back and then we wrote different articles. Yeah. And we became buddies for friends mm-hmm. forever. You see? Mm-hmm. So you have to recreate, you know, the fun part of being a social, social scientist, scientist as well. Okay. <laughs> and an activist, a scholar activist. Yeah. <laughs> and we are all activists, but activism can be fun. Yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely correct. Yeah, uh, and then s- since we are speaking here, uh, I'd like to ask you. So, Penang has always, or at least people know Penang as the um, hub or the center of mm. intellectual progress, political movements. How how do you see how do you see Penang's role in in maybe in in the previous years in the past decades and also right now how do you see Penang as yeah. a place I think it's place not so much Penang mm-hmm. uh, the fact was that there was a place like USM mm-hmm. you know and I think many of us who went through that USM experience actually gave colour as it were mm-hmm. you know and gave maybe the mis- wrong impression that something special about Penang <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I think yes, Penang. You know, it's a coincidence of different different suggestions, lah. Because mm-hmm. Penang has had very very good schools in the past. Mm-hmm. So people who went to say Xavier's to mm-hmm. PFS, mm-hmm. you know, Saint Georgia, mm-hmm. Al Mashor, and mm-hmm. all that. You know, these people actually mm-hmm. became outstanding individuals mm-hmm. in their own right. Yeah. So that's one one strand. Mm-hmm. But I think this thing about a more radical intellectual tradition. Mm-hmm. 
has nothing to do with Penang as mm-hmm. such. Yeah. But I think in the context of Malaysia, what mm-hmm. what happened was that in in the nineteen late nineteen seventies, mm-hmm. uh, our staff association, the PKA, PKAPUSM, mm-hmm. Persatuan Kaki Tangan Akademik mm-hmm. dan Pertapiran USM, uh-huh, right. we actually had a revolt. <laughs> You know, and uh, uh, because they tried to sack, uh, they actually show show cause letter to our president and our secretary general. Mm, okay. You know, and uh, their salaries were suspended. Mm-hmm. So the s- s- academic staff then rallied behind mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. and then we employed lawyers to defend them, mm-hmm. and. Our lawyers was uh, Haji Sulaiman, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. then we used to come to negotiate with the vice chancellor, yeah. and you know, and uh, we used to go in force <laughs> to accompany him to the entrance of the you know vice chancellor's <laughs> office. Yeah, and one of the demonstrations that we held mm-hmm. uh, to protest against you know uh, this harassment of our president and, and, yeah. and why were they in the first place, you know? Treated this way because we held a conference. Mm-hmm. And subsequent to the conference, they gave a talk to the media, mm-hmm. and they talked about oh, sekarang di Malaysia ada ramai orang Profesor Kangkong, <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, tahap you yeah. know academic dalam university semakin merosot. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what they talked about, and yeah. so they were show cause why you should not be suspended. Ah, for, I see. You know. In a There's sense, a you tarnished the image of the university. university. Mm-hmm. So we we did that lah. Yeah. And we had a demonstration, which was the nicest thing. <laughs> we drove around in our cars around USM. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh-huh. there's you know security would still have films about who was who was driving okay. their cars. <laughs> so we had that, but we were also a bunch of very, uh, very vigorous academics. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know the two sort of overlap with one yeah. another. Yeah, you know. so the the convergence and the unity of scholarly yeah. analysis. Yeah, and there there was yeah, a sense activism, of you know sense of like solidarity mm-hmm. pulled us together. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and uh, and there was a period when you had people like Lim Teggi was around, mm-hmm. you know, Martin Kaur before mm-hmm. they all left, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and the man who was playing our protector at that time was Kamal Saleh. <laughs> and Kamal Saleh was our deputy vice chancellor mm-hmm. at that time, mm-hmm. and he and Tan Sri Musa had something going on. They didn't agree with <laughs> one another, so he he provided the sort of umbrella, mm-hmm. you know, for the, for us in USM. Mm-hmm. Just like I think, you know, one should not forget that one of the important roles that Professor Syed Hussein Ali played mm-hmm. in the seventies was mm-hmm. that he provided a an umbrella mm-hmm. for us younger people, you mm-hmm. know, to come out. To speak out mm-hmm. and all that, you know. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's very important to have that. Then, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we might have to bring this conversation to an end. But before that, may I ask you, Prof, if you were to just name three books that have influenced you the most, what what would these three books be? Off the, off the top. Off the head. top. Yes. Uh, one of the books. That I have always enjoyed is Wilhelm's book, mm-hmm. you know, on East-West parallels. Mm-hmm. So he made actually a lot of Western social science intelligible for mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. you know. So I and I, he's a very small man, mm-hmm. professor of you know uh, sociology in Antrop- in uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, but I thought for my generation, powerful man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Ben Anderson's book, not so much imagined communities, mm-hmm. but actually his collection of essays. Mm-hmm. You know, um, specter of comparisons. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's for me very very important book. Mm-hmm. You know, and and the third book actually is also something that my own professor wrote, uh, which is George Cahill, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, Nationalism Revolution in Indonesia. Indonesia yeah. And it's actually the thoroughness, mm-hmm. meticulous in mm-hmm. his footnoting mm-hmm. and, you know, the way that he conducted his research. Yeah. And I think in all three cases, maybe less weird times, but in Ben Anderson and George Cahill's case, uh, mm-hmm. actually I learned the lesson that 
uh, the most important at the end of the day is mm. you actually must do ethnographic research mm. because that's first hand yeah. you know, your you know ethnographic the including and by this car. I also mean interviews mm, yes but this one observation interviewing mm-hmm. is very important mm-hmm. I think the second point is historical research is extremely important mm-hmm. then you look at the documents yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you you look you know so that you don't get accused of can the subaltern speak you know yeah. you know so mm-hmm. uh, so you you actually go and see mm-hmm. and look at and uh, so the interviews yeah ethnographic historical and, uh, research yeah, mm-hmm. historical research. Yeah. i think this is the and their studies are full of this mm-hmm. and uh, for, um the lesson it's not the theory that's important mm-hmm. it's actually getting the empirical research is, done correctly yeah and that will that stands for all time mm-hmm. so you see look at their books ah huh? you see that at the back of you know like ben edison's book on uh, the pemuda revolution mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes it's all data about who he interviewed mm-hmm. and who they all are mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know so you you want to debate him you know you debate who he interviewed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's something there you no know, it's not you don't debate about a theoretical perspective mm-hmm. for me that's you know actually futile yeah. okay <laughs> or maybe later yeah, yeah. later lah uh, later you're old <laughs> yeah. okay so with that uh, I think we might have to call the session to an end thank you very much Prof. Francis for again we are very grateful for joining us for sharing with us your experiences involvement and your work that I'm sure will benefit and as you say we will we will carry with us as we do research going forward thank you very much thank Prof. you very yeah. much for yeah, this opportunity you.